A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, a great number who believed turned to the Lord. The news about them reached the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to go to Antioch. When he arrived and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced and encouraged them all to remain faithful to the Lord in firmness of heart. For he was a good man, filled with the Holy Spirit and faith. And a large number of people was added to the Lord. Then he went to Tarsus to find to look for Saul. And when he, when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year they met with the church and taught a large number of people. And it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. Now there were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manian, who was a close friend of Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul, for the work to which I have called them. Then, completing their fasting and prayer, they laid hands on them and sent them off. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has made known his salvation known. In the sight of the nations, he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. The Lord Sing praise to the Lord with the harp, with the harp in melodious song, with trumpets in the sound of the horn. Sing joyfully before the King, the Lord. Dominus Vobiscum. Et Spiritus. Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Matthäum. Jesus said to the twelve, As you go, make this proclamation. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Cure the sick raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, drive out demons. Without cost you have received, without cost you are to give. Do not take gold or silver or copper for your belts, 
no sack for your journey, or a second tunic, or sandals, or a walking stick. The laborer deserves his keep. Whatever town or village you enter, look for a worthy person in it, and stay there until you leave. As you enter a house, wish it peace. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. If not, let your peace return to, to you. Verbum Domini. One rather strong theme in today's gospel is that of the importance of having trust in God. Huh? Trusting in God, in other words. In today's gospel, Jesus is telling the twelve, trust in me, fear not. Do not take any means for sustenance when doing my work. Do not take gold or silver or copper for your belts. In other words, to be able to buy or trade things. Huh? No sack for the journey, or a second tunic, or sandals, or even a walking stick. Rely solely on me. What a message for all of us. Now, everything we do should be with a view to doing God's work and will in our daily lives. Everything we do should be with a goal towards doing God's work and will in our daily lives. This is why St. John Vianney says, here is a rule for everyday life. Do not do anything which you cannot offer to God at the end of the day. Quote, end quote. Here is a rule for everyday life. Do not do anything which you cannot offer to God at the end of the day. And of course, at the end of the day, when we make our general examination of conscience, and this is a practice not just for consecrated religious, this is something for every Christian. And to close that general exam at the end of the day with an act of contrition, we can look back on that whole particular day and say to ourselves, and indeed ask ourselves, did everything I do today, can it be offered to God? But when one doesn't have that trust in God, one tends to take on things himself, to become a controller himself, indeed to trust only in himself or herself, <laughs> to fashion things according to his or her own stubborn will, to fashion things according to his or her own image and likeness my will be done when we don't have that trust in God. Huh? This can happen so much and so often, my dear friends, that the individual doesn't even see it. And we've all been guilty of this. Because of the lack of trust in God, we become the controller. Things will be done according to my will. Probably the most extreme case of this type of thing is when one turns to divination and or magic and or the occult. They want to see things in the future. They want to have control over persons, places, and things. In other words, this controlling can become so prevalent in a person's life that one can actually turn to such things as astrology fortune-telling, occultism, but even despair because they don't see things going their way, so they despair. Lack of forgiveness. I'm not going to forgive him or her for what they did to me. Lack of forgiveness and the like. All the while thinking that he is bettering his life, and he's not. So we need trust in God. Huh? In its simplest definition, trust implies reliance on someone. Huh? One has confidence in people as persons, for example. 
trust them to be faithful to their commitments or contracts that one has made with other persons, and hopes to obtain from them what they have promised them. But applied to God, however, trust is a form of hope, one of the three theological virtues along with faith and love. A form of hope is what trust in God is about, but with the special nuance that God will not deny His grace to one who does what he can in a given circumstance while cooperating with God's grace. This means that provided a person cooperates with God's daily grace in his or her daily life, according to his or her ability, always looking for God's will and work to be done in their own daily life, that person will merit further grace from God. That's a time-honored teaching on the doctrine of grace. This is why it's so comforting to know that God is willing to meet us where we're at. You know, even the state, uh, even one being in a state of mortal sin, one can still receive an actual grace while in a state of, of, of mortal sin, that is non-sanctifying grace. One can still receive an actual grace, and it's usually that actual grace, for example, that will prompt him or her to get back to confession, to confess the mortal sin, so that they can enter back into a state of sanctifying grace. So God is very merciful, and he's willing to meet us where we're at. But we have to always be willing and ready, to the best of our ability, to always want to work with him in our daily life. Going back to the controller, the extreme case of which is one turning to divination or magic, in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, in paragraph number 2116, we read this. All forms of divination are to be rejected. For example, consulting horoscopes, astrology, palm reading, interpretation of omens and lots, the phenomena of clairvoyance, and recourse to mediums all conceal a desire for power over time, history, and in the last analysis, over other human beings as well. All these things lean towards the fact that the person practicing them seeks power, controlling, okay? Over time, history, and in the last analysis, over other human beings as well as a wish to conciliate hidden powers. They contradict the honor, respect, and loving fear that we owe to Almighty God alone. And so these things work against that holy fear and love and trust and hope that we owe to Almighty God. So, some quotes from the saints on having trust in God, trusting in God. St. Alphonsus Liguori, the great doctor of the church, he who trusts in himself is lost, but he who trusts in God can do all things. Amen to that. St. Paul of the Cross tells us this, Entrust yourself entirely to God. He is a father and a most loving father at that, who would rather let heaven and earth collapse than abandon anyone who has trusted in him. Beautiful, consoling quote. St. Francis de Sales says, We shall steer through every storm as long as our heart is right, our intention is fervent, our courage steadfast, and our trust fixed on God. And St. Jane Francis de Chantel tells us, Whatever good or evil befalls you, be confident that God will convert it all to your good. And this from a woman, a canonized saint, whose own husband died all of a sudden unexpectedly in a hunting accident. Whatever good or evil befalls you, be confident that God will convert it all to your good. St. Teresa of Avila, the great female doctor of the church, tells us, I am afraid that if we begin to put our trust only in human help, some of our divine help may leave us. Consider seriously how quickly people change. 
and how little trust is to be had in them because of this, and hold fast to God instead, who does not change. He wants us to turn to him. When we rely too much on human help, alone, God, being the generous father that he is, may say, okay, I'm going to let you test your own human efforts on your own for a little bit. It'll bring you back to me because you know you will fail. Like a real natural physical father might do with one of his children, one of his stubborn children, who keeps doing things his own way without asking his father's advice. Sometimes a prudent, loving, dear father will say to himself, you know what, the only way he's going to learn this child of mine is by following his own powers, his own intuition, his own stubbornness. And then when he fails, he'll come back to me and ask for the advice. Again, Teresa of Avila, I'm afraid that if we begin to put our trust in human help alone, some of our divine help might fail us. Consider seriously how quickly people change and how little trust is to be had in them because of this. And instead, hold fast to God who does not change and who wants us to turn to him. And again, St. Francis de Sales, the past must be abandoned to God's mercy, the present to our own faithfulness, and the future to divine providence. So many people want to still control the past. So many people through things like divination and magic want to control the future, have power over the future. And because of that, they're forgetting about the sacrament of the present moment, which calls the individual to faith. And so St. Francis de Sales, the great author of the great work, Introduction to the Devout Life, which he wrote for lay people primarily, the laity. This quote from him is very telling. He says, the past must be abandoned to God's mercy, the present to our own faithfulness, and the future to divine providence. Trusting in God. That everything you do throughout the day will conform itself to God's own work and God's own will in your daily life. God bless you.